Hi, hello, welcome back. I did a video a couple weeks ago where I talked about every single book series that I'm currently in the middle of, and spoiler alert, it is quite a bit. And since filming that video, I actually realized I forgot two series that I'm technically in the middle of, but I don't know if I'll ever finish or complete. We'll see. And I also finished two series that I mentioned in that video, those two being the Actar series and the Prison Healer series, so good on me. But I also started another series too, so I don't know. I feel like I'm just gonna be always in the middle of several book series. But for the purpose of this video, I'm actually gonna be trying to finish some of the series that I'm currently in the middle of. One of them being the Magnolia Parks Daisy Hates series by Jessa Hastings. I actually started the last book, well, the last published book in that series, Magnolia Parks Into the Dark, a couple of days ago. I'm not going to give any spoilers about this book because if I do, it's just going to spoil all the other books in the series. But let's just say I'm not ready to be emotionally destroyed by it yet. I'm a little scared to read it because of that fact. But yeah, the plan is to finish this book. It's, I think, like, it's almost seven. Oh, no. It is 700 pages. So this is a lot. It's a big book. I'm not gonna lie. So my plan for this week is to finish this book, but I'm also moving at the same time, hence why my bookshelf is completely empty now. So I don't know how much reading I'm going to do this book this week because I'm still in the midst of packing and I'm going to be moving. So we will see. I'm going to continue on into the dark, so wish me luck. It's actually the next day now, and before I get into my reading update of Into the Dark, I just wanted to say I tried to go to Target today to get the new Allie Hazelwood book, Not in Love, and I even didn't even go on the release date of that book. I purposely went the day after so that my local Target could stock in time. Of course, they didn't have it in stock, which was super cool and fun. I had the same problem with my local Target when I was trying to buy Funny Story by Emily Henry when it first came out, and they also didn't have that book on the release day, and actually they still don't have that book and it's been over a month since that book has been released. So remind me to not go to Target for new releases. <laughs> Last night I got up to page 150, 160 on Into the Dark. I will say if you were apprehensive about getting into Magnolia Parks and just the whole series in general because of some of the events that happened in the first two books, then I would say yes, that's totally valid and fair to not get into the series because it's like Gossip Girl. There's just a lot of relational drama and a lot of back and forth and a lot of just miscommunication and will they, won't they type of situations. So I can definitely understand why people don't want to read the series or are apprehensive in getting into the books because it can be annoying to read about. But I will say the third book in the series, Magnolia Park's The Long Way Home, that's when it starts to take a shift in like the tone of the books. They still have like the gossip girl, funny friendship, relationship drama. But you also get a lot of insight and context into what was happening behind the scenes, if that makes sense. I don't know, I was just pleasantly surprised by The Long Way Home and Daisy Hates the Great Undoing. They felt different than the first two books, but in a better and good way. And I feel like Into the Dark definitely follows the same tone of The Long Way Home, in the sense that yes, there's all this drama, but there's also a lot of discussion around mental health and a lot of really unfortunate and sad things. I feel like all I'm trying to say is I'm really surprised by the direction that Jessa Hastings has taken this series, but I really like the direction it's taking. But yeah, I'm going to continue on reading. 
Hopefully I get to read at least 100 pages more of it tonight, but we'll see. Like I said previously, I am moving and still packing stuff and I feel like my life is a little bit of a mess right now. I don't know. Hopefully I get to read more, but if I don't, I don't. It is what it is. Oh hey, I'm back. I'm now on page 228, chapter 27, so I've read almost 100 pages since the last time I talked. And when I first started this book, I was a little hesitant, and I don't know if hesitant is the right word, but I'm just going to use it, but I was a little hesitant about just like how this book was going to go and the length of the book because it is quite a big read, especially for a romance book in my opinion. So I don't know, I was just hesitant on like where the story was gonna go. Obviously I knew based on how the previous book ended that it was gonna be a little bit more heartbreaking than the last one, and it definitely is. And I just feel so much for the characters, especially Magnolia. She was such the spotlight of all the previous books for me personally. I loved her as a character. I just think she's so funny and wonderful as a character. So yeah, I'm definitely feeling for her for this book and all the situations that are occurring. But despite of my hesitancy of the book and what I thought it was going to be, I am liking it so far more than I expected to like it, which is a good thing. Not that I thought I wasn't going to like it. I knew going in that I was going to like it. I just didn't know compared to the last book for Magnolia Parks, The Long Way Home, how this one was going to compare to that one because I really like The Long Way Home. It was a 4.5 star read for me. And I think this book is the conclusion of Magnolia and BJ's story. So I don't know. I just was curious and or hesitant on how Jessa Hastings was going to wrap up their story. But so far, I am liking it. It is sad. It's painful. But there's still some funny moments between all the friends. And there's a lot of moments of love too. I don't know. But it's mostly just sad. But yeah, I just wanted to give this quick update because this book is sad. It's made me teared up a couple of times. And I feel like it's just gonna be more sad until the very ending. Honestly, the sadness of the book is probably a component of why I'm taking a little bit of time to read this because I feel like I can only handle so much sadness and pain in one chunk of time and then I need to take like a mini break to think about something else. I think I'll read a little bit more tonight. I don't know if I'll read a lot more. Who knows? Maybe I'll just finish the whole book overnight and stay up late reading it. Who knows? But yeah, I just wanted to jump on here with that quick update of my thoughts so far. So it's been a couple of days since the last clip that you just saw. I basically stopped reading after that and was 100% focused on packing and moving and let's just say it was a little bit of a nightmare but survived and as you can see I'm in a new location and have a slightly different setup still working through how I want everything to look and be especially my bookshelf. It's not fully finished yet, but we'll get there one day. But since then, I've actually finished Into the Dark. I actually finished the remaining bit last night, and if you couldn't tell by all the tabs, I absolutely loved this book. And when I finished this book, the first thought I had was, I can't believe this is the last book of Magnolia and BJ's story because I'm just not ready to let them go yet as characters. This book in particular had the most growth across both the characters. BJ already kind of started his growth or redemption arc in The Long Way Home and I feel like I definitely finished in Into the Dark. Do I think he's the most perfect person ever? No, but if you're reading this series or if you just read Jessa Hastings books in general, I don't think you're really looking for perfection in characters or relationships. 
I think BJ has definitely grown a lot since the first book in Magnolia Parks and he puts in a lot of effort to make those changes, which I can appreciate the effort. Also, I feel like Magnolia had the most amount of growth in this book in particular. She started off in a not great space in the beginning of this book and honestly, throughout a lot of the book, she was not in a good space but towards the end she kind of had this realization that she had to let go of a lot of the pain that she was holding on to in order to become essentially like a new version of herself she's still magnolia but she's just a new iteration of magnolia and i love the new iteration of her also i just love jessa hastings writing i feel like she writes about love and grief and sadness and relationships with a significant other or with your family in a way that's so profound yet also so simple. The way she writes about these big topics and big emotions that are really so abstract and hard to put into words sometimes, she does it in a way that is just so simple and relatable. Honestly, that's what I love most about her writing style and why I have so many tabs in her books, especially this series. I really liked BJ and Magnolia's relationship in this book. I feel like their relationship has definitely come a long way from the first book and they made a lot of progress in order to be together and to be together happy and in a way that is more healthy. But yeah, I feel like they definitely got the ending that they both deserved. I will say my only minor complaint about this book is there's a lot of moments that Magnolia is not trusting BJ, which makes sense given their history, but just the ways that it would pop up it was kind of like repetitive in the sense that the same scene that would pop up over and over and I just kind of wish there was a little bit of variety in the scenes of Magnolia not trusting BJ because once it happened the second or third time I was like wait I felt like I've read this scene before a hundred or so pages ago. But overall, if you can tell, I really loved it. I feel like this book has made me laugh, it's made me cry, it has made me feel like my heart is gonna burst just from all the love that was described in this book. And I really liked it, I really loved it. If I'm gonna be nitpicky, I would rate it 4.75 stars, but I just rounded it up to five stars. And I feel like I'm gonna stick with that rating. Anyways, I'm so sad that this is the last Magnolia and BJ book. Also, I'm really curious for the next Daisy Hates book, but it's not published yet, so I still have to wait for it because the events that happened in this book about Daisy and Christian had me so curious about what happened between them. I don't know, it was a little crazy. Sad to leave them, but excited to read the next book whenever it's gonna be published. But that wraps up this video. I was honestly gonna read more books in my uncompleted series, but life got in the way so i was only able to read this book so this video is definitely going to be part one of this mini series i'm going to do a next part i think i'm going to start back up with the raven boy series or i think it's called the raven cycle series and the next book that i have to read is the second book in that series the dream thieves i believe it's called just came off my hold at the library so i finally was able to borrow it so definitely gonna jump into that book next but you just had to keep your eyes open for the next part if you made it this far thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it if you want to follow me elsewhere i'm also on tiktok and goodreads and instagram it's all the same account name, Maddie Reed 6, but until next time.